Okay, before we can understand the book of Ephesians, we need to understand Ephesus, okay? So we're going to start in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. It says, so then to the angel who's appointed over the congregation of Ephesus. Now that word angel could be messenger or pastor or something along that line. Doesn't have to mean angel, angel. Right, the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand. It's the one who's walking among the seven lampstands made of gold. He's the one who's saying this. So we know this is Yeshua talking here. And look at what he says concerning Ephesus. I am well acquainted with your deeds, all of your hard work, your determined perseverance. You cannot tolerate people consumed with wrongdoing. You put to the test even those who call themselves authoritative emissaries, but they are not, and you discovered them to be false. You've demonstrated perseverance. You've endured hard struggles for my namesake. And yet you've grown weary. Or, and you've not grown weary. You've not grown weary. So this sounds like someone who's doing a lot of good works. They're persevering to the end. They're going through tribulation. But why? He says, but you don't no longer love me as you did at the first. Here there are people who work hard for the Lord, but that doesn't tell you that they love the Lord. And that is amazing to me. Here are people that are involved in all these wonderful works and they're enduring tribulation. And it's the church. It's a church at Ephesus. And God says, but you don't love me. I, I can't help but think of a spouse who goes to work every day for his wife, working hard, but they, where happened can you relate to that? Can anyone relate to that? We can work hard, but lose the relationship. Does that make sense? This is where Ephesus is at. It's not that they don't love him. I want you to know they do love the Lord, but the passion's gone. Now they're just doing wonderful works, uh, but th that same passion's gone. This is huge. Look at verse 5 through 7. He goes on to say, Remember then the high position from where you've fallen. Repent right now and do the good works you performed at the start. Wait a minute. They were doing all these works, but they weren't good works. Why? Because it was their works they're trying to do for God rather than his works he wanted them to do. They're planting flowers instead of flipping boogers. You following me? Okay. It's like my wife loves flowers, but I bring her chocolates. And she's allergic to chocolate. That even makes it worse. Okay. Look at Revelation 2, 5 through 7. Okay, here we are. He says, repent right now. And then he says, and I will have to remove your lampstand out of its place. That is, unless you repent, of course, at once. Does he say you can repent down the road or when you feel like it? No. And then it says, even so, you do have this in your favor. You hate the doings of the Nicolaitans. How many of you have read that verse? How many of you know what the Nicolaitans do? <laughs> if you don't know what the Nicolaitans do, how do you know that what is it that he hates? Okay. He says, which I also despise. Then he says, let everyone who has ears listen, pay close attention to what the Spirit teaches the congregations. And to everyone who overcomes, I will give the privilege of eating from the tree of life, which is in the Garden of Eden. Wow. So he hates the doing of the Nicolaitans. So let's find out what that's about. And let's let the Bible interpret itself rather than me trying to tell you what it is. Well, let's go for a minute to Acts chapter 6, verse 5. Look at this. Oh, let me tell you the background. This is where uh, people were upset because some of the uh, people weren't being taken care of. 
So they said, why don't you apostles stick to studying the word and let's get some deacons to help take care of everybody. Everyone familiar with that? Okay, so look what happens. This saying was pleasing to all of them and they made a selection of Stephen, the wonderful guy, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas. He's the one who started the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And guess what? He was a Gentile who had become a Jew. So he doesn't have any of the background of the Bible. He's a convert who probably converted for the wrong reasons. And look what it says now. Let's go. This I added. Sorry, I added this verse to your notes. But you can reference it, and I'll read it. In Numbers chapter 22, verse 31, you all know the story where the Lord opens the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand and he falls on his face. You know the story. Well, let's go to the next church in Revelation chapter 2, which is in Pergamos, which is where the seat of Satan is. And let's read about this group. It says, so then also to the angel appointed over the congregation in Pergamum, right? Here's the guy that has that sharp two-edged sword. This is referring to the one back in Balaam's time. And it says, say this, I know where you live, where Satan's throne is located. You hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith even during the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was martyred before your eyes. Where Satan lives, even so, I have a few things against you because you have among you some of those who hold fast to the message of Balaam. So here, this is a direct reference to the angel with the sword in his hand over Balaam's head. And he says, who kept teaching Balak to put a stumbling block in the way of the children of Israel. And what was that stumbling block? To eat food, sacrificed to idols, and to commit acts of sexual misconduct. So also in a similar way, okay, this means doing that same type of thing. You have among you those who hold fast to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. So the teaching of the Nicolaitans is very similar to eating food sacrificed to idols and committing sexual immorality. But this is a church. How can people go to church and think it's okay to do these things? Well, he says, repent right now or else I will come to you quickly. I will make war against them with the sword which is in my mouth. And what sword is that in his mouth? The word of God. And then he said, let everyone who has ears to hear, listen, pay close attention to what the Spirit is saying to the congregations. To the one who overcomes, I will give to that individual some of the hidden manna and a white stone with a new name carved upon the stone, which no one knows except the one who receives it. Can you imagine that? You get a special name. You know, uh, I grew up, nine kids, each one of us had a pet name that, you know, our mom gave each one of us, you know, I won't tell you some of mine, you're too embarrassing, but uh, one of them was Mickey Mouse, Uh, but that's because I had a little Mickey Mouse hat when I was like one and a half years old when I visited my dad in the hospital, and they got a picture of it, so that's where that came from, but uh, anyway, I just think that's cool that so many of us love to have a name that someone calls us and no one else. You know what I mean? Don't you call anyone that. You call me that. You know? Uh, And so that's, I think it's cool that the Lord loves each one of us individually, that he's going to give each one of us a new name. Wow! Well, guess what? We just got done reading the doctrine of the Nicolaitans had to do with eating food, sacrifice to idols. That's the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, right? And committing sexual immorality. Well, guess what? In Aramaic, the word Nikolai means let's eat. Now, what's fascinating about that is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans that the Lord hates appears to have been a form of antinomianism. Now, I don't know if you know what that means, but nomos in the Greek 
means the law. So basically, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans was against Torah. It makes the fatal mistake that man can now freely partake in sin because the law of God is no longer in effect. That's the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. It held that the truth of righteousness was freely given, but supposed that a mere intellectual belief in that had enough saving power. Can you believe it? The doctrine of the Nicolaitans is one that says the law is done away with. 